The question I want to ask you is you played in London's Hippodrome yeah. and you played in the Crest Theatre in Toronto. Yeah. What was the difference like? I mean, the Hippodrome is one of the big entertainment palaces yeah. of the West End, so yeah. to speak, and the Crest Theatre in good old Toronto in 19, whatever it was, 56, 57, a converted movie house. What was the difference like? Oh, well, I mean, there's just no no comparison. I mean, uh, mind you, we were doing an enormous show at the Hippodrome. Uh, but on the one hand, at the Crest, you were in dressing rooms that smelled of popcorn yeah. and all that that entailed. Yeah. On the other hand, you were in the Hippodrome. And, and who had been in those dressing rooms in the Hippodrome in the last 50 years? God knows. But... Um, but they, they, uh, they were on several levels. I remember having to run up and down stairs, you know, to change costumes. And that, that Still sort of doing thing. the mail for Dr. Blip yeah. sketch. Yes. <laughs> Weren't you tired of the mail by for Oh, I Colonel certainly Blip was. Yes. <laughs> you started to study uh, to be an actress um, in the early 40s or the late 30s with Josephine Barrington oh, with in Josephine. Toronto. It would have been in the 30s. Before the Navy show. Oh, yes. I mean, we used to do, we were like a summer camp. There were the four of us and, you know, uh, had the cottage at Muskoka. And in order to keep, keep us out of mischief, I guess, uh, we were kept busy, like a, a summer camp. And Josephine was one of the projects. So she used to come up and stay, stay for a couple of weeks. And we'd put on a potted Shakespeare. Uh, and how did she direct you, or how did she teach you, in terms of voice or deportment? She didn't, really. She didn't? No. So what I mean, she'd correct your speech a bit, but um, How would she correct your speech? Well, you know, if you slurred your words or uh, that, that kind of thing. But really nothing as far as voice was concerned that I, that I can remember. In terms of breathing no. projection? Oh, no. She, she was very big on the diaphragm. That was it. You had to breathe from the diaphragm, which then I had to unlearn. You know. Right. <laughs> what I'm trying to curious as as an actor because yeah. I was sort of I was on again I was a bridge generation that sort of turned aside from from uh, it's not about what it sounds like yeah. it's about what it's actually saying yeah and I was at the tail end of you should learn to speak the English language as it's meant to be spoken meaning by a small group of people from a certain class who thought that the way they spoke was better than other people exactly as opposed to the Albert Finney yeah. revolution and the, you know, look back yeah. in anger of yeah. actually we should hear people the way they actually sound. Yeah. And Josephine Barrington was from the world, from the earlier world. Oh, of yes, of a, course. A correct way to speak. Yeah. Did that make much of an influence on you? Um, well, I suppose to, to some extent it certainly didn't do anything for, for my voice because for years, I could scarcely be heard, you know. Because you do have soft R's, what we call soft R's. Well, I think, you know, I lived in England for 10 years, and apart from the fact that when I did go to the central school, there, you, I was <laughs> being uh, trained to get a job in, on the English stage, you know, so. So drop your R's and. So I, I uh, you know, at one point, I could get by uh, with an English cast. Mm -hmm. There's a number of Canadian formers, uh, performers. Uh, Kate Nelligan is another person yeah. who went to Central, yeah. who had to learn to yeah. strip out her native accent yeah. in order to act in someone else's yeah. culture. Mm -hmm. But that was more uh, important for in, in your generation because there just wasn't the work here. No, correct. And what else did Josephine tell, teach you? Did she inspire you? 
Oh, well, yes, um, in that um, I suppose I hadn't thought about being on the stage when I was a, a kid, but I thought I'd like to do what Josephine did, you know. I mean, she was quite a glamorous figure as far as I was concerned. I mean, she dyed her hair and she did this and that and the other thing. <laughs> and Central, uh, the Central Speech of Central School of Speech and Drama, uh, what were the courses that you would take there? Um, well, they were, they were acting courses, and there was spe speech um, by a chap called Clifford Turner, who um, he taught at, at um, uh, you know, the Royal Academy, too, um, whom I didn't like. I mean, he was very, you know, hot potato. Hot potato? Well, you know, everything was just like you've got a mouth full of hot potatoes. <laughs> he was... Um, this is to get the sound forward yes, in the mouth? Yes, yes. Because the Canadians, we sit yeah, with the yeah, sound yeah. halfway back. The tip of back. the tongue, the teeth, and the lips, you know, this oh, was I his big thing. hated that exercise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so did you actually do exercises pretending oh you yeah, had the a hot potato? Oh, yeah, the bone prop. And did the you have bone to use prop? Did you have to use a bone prop? No. How does the bone prop work? Well, it was like a little piece of bone that you, and you, you know, spoke your major sound around that. So you, I'm not sure what the object of the exercise was, but I know we had to do it. <laughs> and did you think it was the, the right thing to do or the appropriate thing to do or that's... Well, it, you know... In the 40s, and if you'd been brought up as I was, and also in the Navy, then you did what you were told. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Because I when I was at Lambda, I was with, with a one-year course, and was mainly Americans, Canadians, and South Africans. Yeah. And we basically said to the lady who tried to teach us this, get out. Yeah. We don't want to learn that stuff. We don't like it. We don't like it when we listen to it. We don't yeah. want to sue it. So got out and she broke into tears. <laughs> <laughs> so we felt terrible about it. I regret <laughs> it now because I would I would like to have learned that so I had yeah. would have it as a tool. Yeah. And I can't do it very well. Mm -hmm. But oh, we were headstrong in those days. Did you have a headstrong class? Um, well, it was disparate in that there were a few young girls, you know, who were sort of the normal age to be going to uh, uh, drama school, and they were, uh, I mean, it seemed to be almost like more of a finish sc finishing school for, for them. But there were um, a number of us who were ex-service, you know, and all, all, the, all the chaps were. There weren't many chaps, but they were all ex-service. So it was, um, I think they didn't quite know how to deal with us. And also uh, the teachers, a uh, number of the teachers had been in the service and they weren't back yet, you know, hadn't been demobilized or whatever. So what a radically different way to learn how to be an actress, having been to Oldenburg and Amsterdam and yeah. played at bases in England where a lot of the pilots and crew weren't coming back. Yeah. So that must give you a different perspective when you do Antigone or when you do those mm -hmm. kind of plays. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Boy. The Straw Hat Players. Was that a Davis invention as well? Yes. Um, but <laughs> the early part of Canadian theater was the Davis invention. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Davis slash Chilcott. <laughs> no, I wasn't there. Oh. No, I only did uh, two seasons with the Straw Hat Players. I was living in England for most of that time. 
But the straw hat was started by Murray and Donald, and uh, the the uh, group that they were with at um, at university. Uh, you know, the Gill lot. The, uh, so there was um, Charmian and and uh, Murray and Donald and Eric House and Ted Follows. And you're talking about Bob Gill. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Arab, uh, did I say Arabi? No, Arabi Lockhart. Right. Arabi. And, um, and Barbara Hamilton was in the first years, I think. And she when wasn't when I was there, but she was in the early years. And when you played with the Straw Hat, where did you play? Uh, <coughs> the Gravenhurst Opera House and the um, Port Carling. Uh, I don't know what they call it now. It was a big sort of building in Port Carling. And what was that like? From the Hippodrome to the community center in Port Carling, what was that like? That was different. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, it was fun, fun to be doing plays. Up until that time, I had uh, never really done a lot of plays. I, you know, anything that I had uh, done in, in the West End had been, you know, small part or understudy or something like that. And uh, so with the straw hat, you actually got to do several good parts. And what were some of the favorite plays from that period for you? Uh, did the importance of being earnest, and uh, something called, oh God, Nikki House and I did it. Oh, well, I did Canada, and I did, um, Max and I did Private Lives. And did um, Rob Davis at my heart's core. And oh, what I was it like to what? work with Robertson Davies? Well, he was never around very much, you know. I saw a picture of you and him in a book. Yes, but th I mean, he just came to a rehearsal. I think you know. That was, I think that was just taken for appearance's sake or something. And did you call him Rob or Dr. Davies or? Um, no, I guess from the beginning, because the boys knew him, uh, you know, so by the time I was, you know, it was Rob and Brenda, you know. So. Mm -hmm. so. And also at the Straw Hat and the Crest, you worked with your two brothers a lot. You acted with him a lot. Yeah. What's that like to act with your brothers? Um, it can be tricky. <laughs> no, on, on the whole, it, it was um, it was uh, it was okay on the whole. There were a couple of times, you know, it was. It's awfully, particularly if you're the eldest, you know, <laughs> you're supposed to help them, not scream at them, you know, <laughs> like that. I mean, that's how it was in our house. Right, right. <laughs> you know? And especially if the, if the three of you were actually running the crest in a way. Yeah. Then to, to go to a meeting in the morning and try to figure out a tricky yeah. situation and end up playing yeah. that night. Yeah. Did you ever get tired of the hurly-burly of dressing rooms with smell like popcorn and community centers in Port Carling and think I would rather go back to London than go to the an established theater? Or I did, I think, when I was at the Crest, yeah. I mean, uh, the Straw Hat Players, as I say, I was only there for two seasons, and it wasn't all that long.